I'm heading to Bradford Research Farm and we are gonna go shell some corn. First, we had to come to South Farm and borrow a semi. We got the Magnum. We're gonna get it fired up. We made it to the farm. Combine man is over there somewhere. Got the auger wagon and, and two trucks. Getting here was kind of difficult because we had to drive this tractor and uh, we, we actually did have a flag truck running in front of me so I could tell when people were coming or not. That was kind of helpful. But we had to take the outer road north of I-70 to get here. Uh, we moved like 20 miles from uh, where we were east of Columbia to darn near Kingdom City. Big time university farming today. Putting this corn into that bin. Today at Bradford the Beautiful, we are harvesting corn on the farm. Since we're not going very far, we're just using these Case IH Magnums and gravity wagons to take it back to a bin that's at the main farm, which is right over there. There's my coworker headed off with another load. To unload a wagon, all you need to do is drop that, turn the auger on, and then open that up. And then it goes up the auger into the bin. And the corn goes away. 7110 Magnum. This thing is an absolute beast. Here we have the Epic 2555, which is on the auger. These Case IH 7110 Magnums are amazing. Lots of horsepower, very maneuverable, and just plain awesome. We are mainly doing small fields today, so we're able to finish them pretty quickly. We just got this one here done, and we're gonna start that one. Bradford also has their Gleaner F3 with a four row corn head running tonight. This isn't exactly ideal. I lost my throttle control. 4230 to the rescue. Maybe. Oh yeah. 4230 is coming to, this, to save the Magnum. Same story, different Magnum. Double the wagons. Double the fun, right? Despite being the same model of Magnum, which is a 7110, this one has a different shift pattern and this area over here is a little different as well. Still a very sweet tractor. These are the last two wagons for today. The plan now is to park the Magnum, and I think we're calling it a day. Good night. Got out of class, and now I'm going to leave, go to work, and then we're going home. The day before last, which would be Wednesday, I had a very special opportunity. I was invited by a meteorology professor at Mizzou, who by chance watched my videos, to speak at his honors class, of all things, at Mizzou. I am pleased to report that that went very well, and I believe I'm going to be doing it again. I see that as a massive W for Goldinger Farms and the YouTube channel in general. And so begins the 10 mile drive to Bradford. The Magnum is alive and idling a little high. We just had to make it work. We did some investigating and it was in fact the throttle cable that broke on this thing. Just a little threaded part at the very end right next to the injection pump that controls how far it open or close it is. We got her and man, she's nice now. 
I even dusted off the windows, vacuumed the inside. She is a mint. This is Bradford's new plot combine. It's an Almaco, handmade, two row corn head. Look at all the capacity this unit offers you. Boys are rolling. I've seen quite a few people either A, cutting beans, B, shelling corn, or C, planting wheat here in Rawls County and Audrain County and Callaway County for that matter in my drive home. It is now the next day. The plan this morning is to take my truck here, take us to town. I'm gonna pick up the new taillight that I ordered last weekend to replace the one that unfortunately was destroyed and put that on. And then I gotta go to John Deere to get something and then I'll be back. Cold start. No dice on the taillight today. Oh well. I had some fancy new kicks this video. The High Sea Outdoors sent me a pair of steel toe work boots. I wore them this weekend, you can see it in the video. Um, I really liked them and they actually sent me a special discount code. The discount code is Goldinger1 or Goldinger2 if the first one doesn't work. Links in the description. And I'm gonna be wearing these in the coming videos because honestly, I like them. The steel toe really helps you on the farm. Sometimes we kick stuff that we're not supposed to kick. My ride over to Side and Stricker is the 9330. I just have to drop that off real quick and uh, then I'll be back home. Cold start. Say goodbye to the 9330. I said several videos ago that it got traded. I never said on what though. But hey, if anyone wants a 9330 with uh, like 3,000 engine hours on it, hit up Side Stricker Novi, they'll cut you a deal. You guys remember when I said there was a nice 9520RX at Side Stricker that had already been sold? Well, I didn't say that it, it had already been sold to my dad, but uh, here it is. And yes, this is what the 9330 was traded on. This 9520 has about 1100 something hours and it's pretty clean, I gotta say. Without further ado, let's get it home. The 9330 was cool because it blowed black smoke, but uh, this one has a nice cab, a fridge, and Bluetooth radio, and four tracks. So what could a guy not like? We had a good run, 9330. Maybe I'll see you in the next life. I finally made it to the field and I have a section to replace and then we're good to cut beans. Oh yeah, we're cutting beans on the mountain. Hello, dad. He wasn't even looking. These beans right here, not very good. You can look at them and see there's this whole area down here on the bottom of the hill that's kind of eroded over the years and it's just not very good anymore. Paging Justin. There he is. I got yet another uh, small point worked out and now I can go do some of the nice rows if you can call them nice. Surely it can be better than having the header down for like 30 seconds at a time and turning around like all the time. Oh, the struggles of a Missouri farmer. But hey, there's beans in the tank, so life is good. I was going along just great, and then the uh, combine decided to shut off again. That's awesome. So we will um, do the startup routine. Key off. Open the door so we can just hear what's going on. Let's try it with a little bit of throttle. I noticed today that when you're trying to harvest beans and you cannot use auto steer and you're on terraces and things that maybe aren't necessarily auto steer capable, uh, you don't have a lot of time to video. I just thought that was funny how that worked out. I waited five minutes and now it's running again. I hope it stays running.
You know what they say, right? No bean left behind. That painful farm is finally over. Dad's already getting ready to move to the next one. Head trailer is over there, and that's where my head's gonna go. I had always kind of wondered why my dad, like, hated cutting terraces, and now I know. It's because they suck. We got moved to the next farm, which happens to be uh, like a creek bottom, and this year it flooded, and that resulted in lots of debris in the field, such as sticks that can find their way into the header. That's not always very good. And there's, there's lots of stuff out here. I wonder what today's prize on what's in the head is. Oh, it's another stick. I guess this beat sitting in Columbia in my apartment doing nothing though. We've gotten what we can of this bottom field and dad's over there working on the other part of it. But you can see out in the window, there's just a lot of sticks and stuff that you don't want to run through the combine. Grandpa's over there in the 8400 working on our creek crossing so I can get across to the other six acre field on this farm. Now that Grandpa's out of there, that's my cue to get across the river. I'm currently on a gravel bar that's in South River. That's what this river is right here. So I guess I should call that a small river bottom field, not a creek bottom. Hey look, I'm harvesting wheat. Weeds, not wheat. Honestly, that field was not nearly as bad as I thought. I'm glad that bottom field is over. <sighs> All right, we got more acres to do, let's go. My mom rode with me for a while and brought me Mimi's. Now she's gonna go ride with dad. We're done at that farm. Now I have to make the long journey across the gravel road to the next one. It's currently 11.30 and I've been at it since 11.30 a.m. And it's now 11.30 p.m. So that's 12 hours in the combine for me. But I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm out here with my family and good friends and everyone's having a good time. The beans aren't the greatest, but we didn't get a good stand and there was too much water and then there wasn't enough water. Oh well. Sometimes beans you have to adjust how high or low your reel is because shorter beans don't like to fall under the head unless they have that reel to push them. But then on, this, on the other side of that coin, if the beans are too tall, they'll get wrapped around and that's also not very fun. This is it. This is the last unload for the night. 11.37 and we finished everything on this farm. May set the heads off yet tonight, I'm not super sure. But today was a good day. Get the hopper folded up in case it rains tonight. Well, looks like we finished just in time too. That's all she wrote. Dad just told me that we cut 290 acres today. Like, you guys saw the mountains that we were on and the little patches. That's really good. Eyes are a little bloodshot. Eh, probably yeah, goes bad. Like yeah. Light work. Yeah. You guys coming to work tomorrow morning? Nope. <laughs> so it did rain last night, and Dad and I are going to go check it out north of town. North of town got quite a bit more rain than we did down here. Yeah, this is how we know that it rained a little bit more north of town than it did in our area. Anyone want to go swimming? It's kind of cold. Yeah, I think we can cut those beans tomorrow. Just get some wind and some sun on them and it'll be fine. Gee, thanks, Dad. Uh, I got my truck wet. <laughs> Just a little. Thanks everybody for watching this long and if you're liking what you're seeing, I hope you subscribe, uh, like the video, share it, tell someone, anybody. And with all that said, uh, thanks for watching and I will catch you guys on the next one. GN9620RX. Oh yeah, the sun's out, beans will be ready to cut in an hour.